Hi, my name's Nikolai, aka 56 Minor, and today we're unboxing our Build Your Own Fashion Illustration Kit. Now the most exciting aspect of this kit is that you get to pick the materials. So in this video, we're going to focus on the materials that we've curated for you, talk about why we've selected them, go over some different rendering techniques, and build a few outfits. And I'll show you which materials I picked from the Build Your Own selection as an illustrator. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get into it. Now the most important item in our box is going to be the Fashion Sketch Pad by Tamar Daniel. This sketchbook offers us a wide range of croquis, which are going to be the figures that we draw our outfits on. In addition to some industry insights, it's also going to offer a garment encyclopedia. This encyclopedia is great because it offers us some reference material, so we don't have to create every outfit from scratch. Throughout this video, I'll show you different ways to reference the encyclopedia to bring your own creations to life. It also includes a list of industry terms so that you can speak to your designs with confidence. And most importantly, this fashion sketch pad includes 420 karaoke's in 20 different poses, so you can draw an outfit from multiple angles and give it a bit more personality depending on what outfit you choose. Our first curated art supply is going to be the Blackwing Matte Pencil. These pencils feature a Japanese graphite core, which allows us to reach really rich, dark values. Because the graphite's on the softer side, it's perfect for laying in our initial sketch lightly, or going over those lines for a more darker and impactful statement. The next item in our kit is going to be the Copic Chow and Grayish Violet. These alcohol markers feature a chisel tip and a brush tip, so our chisel tip is going to be good for more structure and stronger lines, while our brush tip is going to allow us to get into smaller areas and create more flowing lines. The final curated item in this set is going to be the Impact Gold Uniball Gel Pen. This gel pen is one of the best available. It gives us really smooth and consistent lines, and it has a really opaque shimmery gold pigment. We can use this gel pen for accessories or details to the outfits that we build. Now for my first outfit, I'm going to take some inspiration from our garment encyclopedia and do a take on a sheath dress. For my design, I'm going to iterate off of the image in our garment encyclopedia by adding a mock collar and a few cutouts. Now thanks to our croquis, we really don't have to worry about the human anatomy when working on our outfit. We can just focus on creating a fun, interesting design. For my cutouts, I'm going to have one cross the left clavicle on my dress, and one come up from the right side of the waist. Now, a sheath dress is typically a straight dress that nips in at the waist a little bit, so we're going to ensure that we have that hourglass shape, even though we're introducing some new design elements. To me, this style of dress kind of personifies a cocktail dress. It's form-fitted, yet can be formal, and you can dress it up or down. For our outfitting, we're going to take a more youthful approach. So we're just going to keep it simple to the dress, give it a clunky shoe, and add a few accessories. Moving on to the next croquis, I'll get to showcase the back of the dress, identifying where those cutouts stop, and giving a more complete picture of this design. To add some more personality to my croquis, I'll go in and add a messy bun and some blunt cut bangs. This will help to give us that more youthful approach, and kind of tell a little bit more of a story. Adding these little details to your illustration give the audience or the viewer a better understanding of the woman that would wear the outfit. So now that our dress design is complete, we can take our Kobuk Chow and go in and give it a bit more life. So the reason why I love this cobalt violet versus a traditional black marker is because it allows us to build value and imply a bit more form. By first going in and identifying those areas where the fabric will be a bit darker, say where the collar wraps or the scapula on the back, will allow us to give us a more three-dimensional form to our dress. While filling in these areas, I'm going to be working fairly quickly because these alcohol markers are going to be a wet media. So in order to reduce streaks, we'll want to work quickly so that that ink can spread out and dry consistently as well as go back in and layer our ink for a more consistent color. Now, if we were just to use a typical black marker for this, we wouldn't be able to attribute all this form that we're seeing. It would kind of flatten out our dress and take away a lot of the life. For our clunky shoe, I'm gonna go in with our chisel tip 
as it will allow me to fill in those areas and establish the straps really quickly. Now while we're giving this croquis a bit of a messy bun, I still think that she would put on some accessories before leaving the house. So I'm going to give her some earrings. Now for my kit, the next item that I selected was the Sketchbox Signature Marker in Praline. This alcohol-based marker has a chisel tip and a brush nib, just like our Copic, and I love the color of this marker. It's close to a skin tone, but could also be more of a camel color, so it has a lot of versatility in it. For this outfit, I'm going to use it on our croquis to fill in the outlines of our figure so it can stand off the page a bit more. While doing this, I'm going to use long flowing lines and try to work quickly to minimize streaking. For a little bit added effect, I'm going to go over areas such as the elbow or the knees, and this will help to add a little bit more variance to the skin tone and give our figure a bit more life. Now because the croquis lines in our sketch pad are fairly light, it's going to be a bit harder to see. If you don't want to fill in an area with a skin tone, you can always emphasize those lines by going over them with your black wing pencil. Since I decided to fill in my croquis, I'm going to emphasize joint areas like the knees or areas with a lot of blood like the cheek. I do think she needs one more accessory though, so I'll add a thin gold bracelet to her wrist and then use the black wing pencil to add a bit more definition to our hair. By bending my lines in the way that the hair would flow up to the bun, I can imply a bit more realism even though fashion illustration is always fairly abstract. The next item that I picked for my kit is going to be the King Art Pro Liner Set. This custom 12 set of fine liners is a great addition to any artist's arsenal as it offers us a lot of really beautiful saturated colors. And the fine liners offer us a thin and consistent line that we can use for outlines, adding color variation to areas by packing our lines, and also applying a bit of texture by using different hashing techniques or combining different colors. My next item is going to be the Tombow ABT Pro marker in Burt Sienna. These alcohol markers feature both a chisel tip and a brush tip. Burnt Sienna has been used by artists for hundreds of years in order to reflect skin tones. It's also just a beautiful warm brown color that can be used for a variety of materials. Now the third item in my kit is going to be the Copic Sketch in Holiday Blue. I chose this color because it complements the orangey tones of our Praline and our Burnt Sienna. And just like our Copic Chow, this marker will feature a chisel tip and a brush tip. Now since our last outfit was a bit more formal, let's make something a bit more casual. For this outfit, I'm going to be making a more collegiate inspired look. I'm going to reference the bomber jacket and the pleated pants in our garment encyclopedia. I'm going to be emphasizing the elasticated cuffs and hemlines of both those garments, and that'll give us a more consistent overall look. When sketching on top of a croquis, it can be really tempting to make everything be really tight and form-fitting, but you can have a lot of fun by exaggerating shapes and making things a bit more bulky. You can see this especially in the shoulders of my jacket and the hip and thigh region on my pants. Incorporating these larger and more dynamic shapes will help bring overall visual interest to our outfit. To bring some personality to my croquis, I'll add a loose ponytail as a collegiate look always kind of borders that sports mentality. With my sketch established, I'll go in with the King Art Fineliners and solidify my sketch. Now you'll notice that I'm not copying the garments from our encyclopedia exactly. I'm just using them to kind of identify a rough roadmap and then I'm using my own personal tastes in order to design the outfit itself. This is a great approach if you're not quite sure on what you'd like to draw and just need a little bit of a push to get those creative juices flowing. Now when it comes to a line art perspective, I like to keep my lines specific to the outline, folds, and any seams on my garment. As you explore more complex designs, you'll find that these are the areas that you want to really clearly define. This will allow for the viewer to be the most informed when looking at your sketch. And your line art doesn't always need to be made with fine liners. The next item in my kit is going to be the Holbin Colored Pencil in Prussian Blue, and this will allow us to have some fun texturing effects while still allowing for clean lines. One of the reasons why I love colored pencils is they allow you to create a large value range. By using just a light pressure, I can create some subtle value, 
and I can increase that and create a darker blue by applying more pressure. Now you don't want to apply too much pressure as you may damage the paper, so to achieve your darkest and richest values, I would suggest going back over areas to re-emphasize them. Now a lot of collegiate style bombers have a leather centerpiece or torso to their jacket and then cotton sleeves. So here I'm going to use the color pencil on the sleeves and that'll help to identify a material shift in our outfit. Now before we get too deep into rendering the different fabrics of our outfit, I'm going to go in and establish the hair with our fine liner and fill in the skin areas with our Sketchbox Signature Praline Marker. This will help to establish the personality of our model, which can inform our clothing design. Next, I'm going to take our Tombow marker and use it to emphasize the cheeks and the joint areas, just like we did with our praline in the last outfit. Little details like this help to keep fashion illustration fun and more abstract. Now, to imply the material difference in the fabrics of our jacket, I'm going to employ a few techniques. Now the first is going to be leaving a bit of the white exposed on the body of our jacket so that we can imply a little bit of reflectivity. We want to imply that it's maybe a plastic or a leather material, so I'm going to leave that section of white exposed and I'm going to go the full width of the jacket. To contrast the body of our bomber, I'm going to bring back our color pencil and I'm going to use it to render the sleeves. This soft, almost airbrush effect is going to imply that that material is going to be a cotton or something non-reflective. By adding a bit more pressure when using our color pencil, I'll add a few details to the collar and the elastic hem. I'm going to fill in the back of the sleeves a bit more, as those are going to be in shadow so they won't have any strong highlight. For the pants, I'll bring back our Kovic Chow, initially focusing on the waistband, any areas of shadow, or pleats. This will give us a lot more form when we go back in and fill in those pant legs. So to fill in that area, I'm going to be bending my lines, kind of making a balloon shape as I shade, and this will give the poofy effect that we had on the sleeves and make everything a bit more cohesive. By breaking up our sections as we fill them in, we can actually use the slight streakiness of markers to our advantage to imply more form. Notice that this creates a more heathered look to our fabric, but doesn't imply the same level of shine as we had on our jacket. While this is a more collegiate look, I don't think our croquis would wear sneakers with this outfit, so we're just going to go with a closed-toed wedge, but keep it with that sport white. And to dress this up just a little bit, I'm going to take our Uniball Gold Gel Pen and add some closures to the jacket itself, some stud earrings because I don't think that she would wear hoops, and add a gold drawstring to our pleated pants. This is definitely my favorite stage of any illustration because it's really where everything starts to come together. And overall, I think this is a strong athleisure look that's a little bit more elevated. For my next outfit, I'm going to bring in the ABT Pro Marker in Poppy Red, which is another item that I selected for my kit. And with this outfit, we're going to really take advantage of the flexibility in that brush tip. So at this point, we've created an evening look and something a bit more sporty. So next, let's create something that's a little bit more business casual. Now, just like before, I'll be referencing our garment encyclopedia. But instead of using these exact garments, I'm going to change them up a little bit. I really like the long format of the trench coat and the double buttons. So I'm going to swap that for more of a pea coat. And while I really like the flowiness of the peasant blouse, I'm going to change that a bit by making it a button down with a Peter Pan collar. A Peter Pan collar is just like a traditional collar, it's just rounded instead of pointed. And while I really like the idea of the wrap skirt, I'm going to dress that up just a little bit by giving it more of a pencil skirt length and adding a buckle around the waist. Notice as I'm sketching that I'm clearly defining each garment in its respective space. I'm not letting my lines bleed into each other, I'm trying to really nail those elements down on the page. For my liner, I'm going to primarily use the Grey King Art Fine Liner, and then to separate the skirt from the other elements, I'll be using the maroon on that section. As I work on my line art, I'll add a few details, like the seams on the jacket, or where the fabric bunches around the elbows. 
These little details help bring a bit more realism into your design and also just makes it clearer for the viewer. When designing this outfit, I wanted to make sure to contrast the more masculine look of the peacoat with its padded shoulders with something a bit more soft and feminine with the blouse and the wrap skirt. I found that not just in outfitting, but in drawing in general, it's always a good idea to keep those contrasts in mind as they make a more visually compelling image. Once I'm happy with my line art, I'll go in and erase any unnecessary pencil lines and start to fill in different areas. For our hair, I'm going to be using our grayish violet, and I'm going to layer this so that we can get a bit more three-dimensional form to that hair. I'm also going to use this on the boots of our outfit, making sure to let a little bit of the white of our page peek through so that they look like they're made of leather. Next, I'll take my burnt sienna tombow and use that for the skin tone on my croquis. Taking special attention to the legs, as that back leg is going to be further in shadow than the forward leg. Even just by laying our marker on that back leg, we can give this pose a little bit more life. Once I'm done filling in the skin tone of our croquis, I can go in and start to fill in the different areas of our garments. So for the pea coat itself, I'm going to be using our Sketchbox Signature Praline Marker, and I'm going to be going over it several times to really saturate that paper. This will give us two effects. It'll allow us to have a more consistent color throughout the garment, which is good because a pea coat is typically made from wool or other matte fibers, so it's not going to be very shiny. It'll also allow me to create softer shadows. So if you look around the waist of the garment, that shadow line is a lot softer and it gives the impression of three-dimensional form a lot better. To contrast this softness, I'm going to go in with our poppy red tombow and immediately establish these shadow lines on our wrap skirt. By establishing these shadow areas, we can clearly communicate how the garment's constructed, and it'll also allow us to drape the fabric a bit more. So because I want the skirt to have just a little bit of reflectivity, maybe it's like a soft satin, it's going to have areas that are lighter and areas that are darker. When using markers like this, I really try to pay attention to what's underneath the garment. So for instance, our croquis leg crosses in front of her, so the bottom right of the skirt is going to fall into shadow, so I'll make that area darker. To fill in the rest of the skirt, I'm going to grab the next item in my kit, which is going to be the Derwent Chroma Flow Color Pencil in Scarlet. I really enjoy the Chroma Flow Color Pencils as they've got a good amount of pigment, and you don't have to press too hard in order to get darker values. We're going to use our Chroma Flow on top of our poppy, and that's going to shift the color from a cool red to something with a bit more warmth to it. And that's going to be because the Chroma Flow is slightly more orange than our poppy red marker. I like to section off different areas when coloring with my color pencils. I feel like it gives it a bit more three-dimensional form and helps things stand out a bit. So I'm going to start by doing a base layer, and then I'll go in and darken up different areas as I see fit. I'll also use our color pencil to add a bit of blush to my croquis. With our Uniball gel pen, I'll detail the buckle on our skirt, as well as add a few accessories. Using the Blackwing pencil, I'll add some shadows to our blouse, as well as add a few buttons. I really like using the pencil for subtle shading, and we can also use it on our boots to emphasize the darkest areas. This will really help to make them look a bit shinier so they're more like patent leather. And again, it's really all about the contrast here that gives us that shiny effect. Once I'm happy with my boots, I'll go back in with our Impact Gold gel pen and add a few buttons to my pea coat, as well as go back in with the Chroma Flow and darken up certain areas of our skirt. I always feel like the last few touches on any drawing are really where everything starts to pull together, and I think overall this is a very strong, professional looking outfit. The next item that I selected for my kit is going to be the Pantone marker in 304. Now unlike the other markers that I've selected for my kit, this is going to be a pigment and water based marker, which will allow us to create a larger value range and complement the Copic marker that I've already selected. For this next outfit, let's do something a little bit different and a little bit more fashion forward. For this look, I'm going to exaggerate the button down and pleated skirt from our garment encyclopedia. I'm going to do this by playing with length of my garments, so I'm going to elongate my button down and my pleated skirt, 
and then change that sleeve on the button down to something a bit more like a kimono sleeve. And to make these garments a bit more youthful, I'll pair them with a bralette so that we can still get a more edgy look to our outfit overall. Once my sketch is complete, I'll go in with my King Art fine liners and start to establish the overall shape of my garments. For this outfit, I'm going to be relying heavily on the markers that I've chosen. That way I can render different materials, clothing folds, and that pleat work. To help separate the bralette from my top, I'm going to be using two different colors of our blue fine liner, and that'll just help them stand out from each other. As I'm relying on those markers to really render out the garments, I'm just putting my lines where the garments start and end, and anything important like the band on the bralette. Even at this stage of the drawing, you can see that this look is very cohesive. We have a recurring shape, which is kind of a teardrop shape, in both the skirt, the bralette, and the sleeves of this outfit. Once I'm happy with my line art, I'll go in with our eraser and erase any unnecessary pencil lines. Having erased a lot of those lines, I feel like the skirt didn't quite read as pleated as much, so I'm going to add a few additional lines just to imply that wrapping a bit more. Next, I'll take my Sketchbox Signature Praline Marker and fill in the exposed areas of skin on my croquis. Now for my bralette and the button down, I really want the material to be shiny. I want it to be kind of like a silk or something with a lot of reflectivity to it. So to do this, I'm going to take my Pantone marker and leave large areas of white or the paper exposed when filling in those garments. Just like with our athleisure outfit, I'm going to leave a strip of white exposed on the sleeve of my left croquis, and this will really drive home the shininess of that garment. It'll also help to accentuate the length of the sleeve. Now for the rest of my outfit, I'm going to be utilizing the Kobuk Chow and Grayish Violet, first emphasizing any areas of shadow or where the fabric bunches. I'm also going to be using this for the croquis hair, and we'll leave a few streaks as if she's got a little bit of white to her hair. Now for the pleats themselves, I'm going to be utilizing the chisel tip on our Kobuk Chow and making long sweeping lines. This will help to apply those pleats instead of having to go in and render each individually. This style of skirt is known as an accordion pleat and really helps to elongate our croquis. Now to add a bit of sparkle to my outfit, I'm going to use the last item that I've selected for my kit, which is the Sakura Pen Touch in Metallic Silver. To activate this pen, we will need to press the tip into our paper, that way we can saturate that nib with the pigment. I really love this art supply because of the calligrapher tip, it allows us to create very thin consistent lines, or lines with a lot of variance to them just with how we hold the pen itself. It also has a really beautiful metallic sheen finish, so it's perfect for accessories and metallic details when working with fashion illustration. I'll use this to add a few accentuating details to my outfit, like a simple hanging chain necklace, which will complement a chain belt. I'll also fill in the shoes with a bit of silver, that way it's got a bit more personality. I always try to balance out these metallic details throughout an outfit, because I don't want any area to look too weighted down. And I think out of all the outfits we've created today, this one's probably my favorite. And that's all for our video. I hope you've enjoyed it, learned a few things, and if you want to post your outfits online, make sure to use hashtag sketchboxfashion. We love seeing what y'all create. And if you want to pick up any of the additional materials that I've used, head over to shopsketch.com. Once again, my name's Nikolai, and I'll see you around.